I'm Ramni Ladar, and I'm going to walk you through a series of couple of applications that show you how easy it is to deploy to Cloud Foundry. My goal for this presentation is that you understand enough of the concepts and see how easy it is to deploy to Cloud Foundry that you can take your own applications and push it to Cloud Foundry and experience uh, the platform for yourself. Before I do that, I just want to quickly go over uh, some of the value proposition of Cloud Foundry for those who are not familiar with Cloud Foundry. This may be useful. So a fundamental concept here is that complexity is increasing, and that means time to market keep decreasing. There is a lot of pressure to develop complex applications faster. And the way we respond to this is we have new languages and frameworks that helps you increase developer productivity and reduce time to market. But we also got challenges in terms of new devices and domains, so no longer it's sufficient to just have a website. We need to also worry about mobile applications. We also need to worry about integration with social media and other things. And there is also several new kinds of data types. So no longer we only save in relational database, but we have a variety of NoSQL data solutions, and we need to worry, worry about those because we can, if we can leverage them effectively, we can uh, reduce time to market as well. And there is a virtualization uh, aspect to it. So no longer we just deploy on real servers, but we have virtualization so that we can utilize our resources more correctly. Our idea behind CloudFound is that we require an application platform for the cloud era. So platform as a service. And it should be simple, as in should you should be able to focus on your code and not about wiring up. And this is this presentation focuses on Spring. So it's worth uh, pondering a bit over saying what are what were the Spring framework's goals? Exactly the same thing, right? We wanted you to focus on your code and not about infrastructural issues. So now we are taking that same message to a next level and also trying to solve the deployment problem. We want it to be open, just like Spring Framework, where we do not want you to lock into a specific cloud. And not only that, we don't, do not want you to lock into cloud either. So if you want to deploy onto a regular application server, you should be able to take your application and deploy it in any cloud or without cloud. That means we should not ask you to make too many changes to your application code. And we want you to be able to deploy and scale your applications uh, in seconds. So if you want more multiple instances, it should be as simple as a click of a button or a command. So it's our, Cloud Foundry is the first open platform as a service. We offer choices of uh, cloud deployment. We offer choices of application services. And it's open source, so you can either deploy to cloudfoundry.com or one of those partners, or you can take that code and run it in your own data center. What developers really want is simple commands to be able to push your application. So you, you have your application, for example, a WAR file, and if you want to deploy that application, it should be as simple as a command. In this case, VMC push your application. Or you can push back an application. You can have a set of application pushed by just using uh, these simple commands. And if you want to bind a service, you don't have to go and install a MySQL or Postgres, etc. But simply say, I need a Postgres service or I need a MySQL service. So Cloud Foundry supports a variety of frameworks. So from Spring, Rails, uh, as well as Scala and Rails and Node.js. We also support a variety of services, data services, NoSQL services. RabbitMQ, message services, and provide a variety of deployment options, private cloud, public cloud, and micro cloud, which you can run on your own laptop. And on the top of it, everything is open source under a very liberal license, Apache 2 license. And you can go to cloudfoundry.github.com uh, slash cloudfoundry to get all the source code. So now I'm going to walk you through an application and how to deploy it. So what I did is I searched on GitHub to, uh, for a, a reasonably well-written application, Spring application, 
which doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, Cloud Foundry code in it. So it's basically what I would call application in the wild. So I found this application, Ring to Park, online. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this code. So I'm going to copy this URL and do a git clone first. So I'm starting with nothing. I got my application in here. And then I am going to load this application in STS. In the second part of presentation, I will show you how to do it using command line tools. Let's import it. And select where I, this is, this is good actually, I'm already there. And let's finish. So I loaded the application in my STS, and it's doing its build, building workspace, let it do it. Meanwhile, I can create a server. Actually, let me do a project clean. So let me create a new server, uh, just as you would have, let's say, a TC server or a Tomcat server or a JBoss server you can create Cloud Foundry server using STS. So you go here, choose Cloud Foundry, and then you give your credentials. And you can choose your destination platform, uh, destination cloud in this case. And I choose the default one, api.cloudfoundry.com. But you could choose your micro cloud or local cloud or one of the partner clouds. Validate the account, finish. So now I have here a server that will let me deploy this application. So deploying is very straightforward. I take this application, drag and drop here. It asks me for name. It chooses the framework. And in this case, it detected automatically that it is a Spring framework. If it was a Grails application, the process would have been exactly the same. Let's go for next, and then it's giving me a default URL. This URL has to be, of course, universally unique. Then I go next, and I can create a service. So in this case, I can create a ring DB, and I can choose my SQL. Finish, and then I Say finish. So what is happening now is the application was compiled locally because of uh, because I loaded in Eclipse. The resulting WAR file got pushed onto Cloud Foundry. Then, since I asked it to be bound to a MySQL service, a MySQL service was provisioned, and that service was exposed to the application. So, and in that process, we did what we call auto reconfiguration which means we detected a bean that was using database. And let me in fact show you. So the, in fact, the original uh, application had database properties, let's say, what were those? Um, HSQL DB. And it was, it, it was set to essentially use local memory database, but um, since I bound it to MySQL, I may end up using MySQL database. And I don't have to change anything. In fact, you saw that I cloned from GitHub and just pushing the application. All right, now let's look at the application. So it shows me here, this is the application, the services are bound, and it is available under this URL. Let me copy this link and go to this application. In fact, you can, you should be able to go to this application, uh, this URL, and play around. So I can now log in, and it has some usernames and password. This is a demo application; it's not meant to be production. So it's very helpful in even providing username and passwords. I log in, and I can, for example, look at vehicles and I can add vehicle. Let's add a Toyota. 
and let's say this is my nameplate CFROX and I got my application running so I can now go ar around and do other things what I want to show you quickly is how do I know that database actually uh, I did actually end up adding a vehicle so for that I will use um, VMC tunnel command so VMC tunnel allows you to have access to your services so in this case I want to have access to my ring DB database so when I say VMC tunnel it's going to go and look into services that are bound to my application my uh, account and it will give me a choice to connect to one service so it's going to be my DB uh, sorry ring DB and it's going to do whatever necessary to set it up so that I can have a local connection to MySQL that's running in Cloud Foundry. And it gives me, gives me all this information, username, password, and name. I can take this information and put it into, let's say, a UI tool. That's perfectly fine. But it also gives me a choice of starting a tool. And in this case, I want to start with MySQL. And I can see here all the st standard MySQL command. This is just regular MySQL running on local machine, talking to database in Cloud Foundry. So I can say here, show tables. There are a bunch of tables. Let's see if my vehicle was added or not. So I can say select star from vehicle. And yes, my sea of rocks. Um, a vehicle was added indeed so I can now play around it so it's with, again just to emphasize point I took an application in the wild uh, it's a reasonably written application and pushed it to Cloud Foundry within few minutes and have it running without changing anything in my in Cloud Foundry the next part of demo I want to do is different application so in this case, I'm going to go to this Hello Spring MongoDB. Now this application, you can download it uh, from Cloud Foundry samples uh, on GitHub. So this application is a very simple MongoDB application. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to compile this application. So in this process, I'm going to produce a WAR file, and I should be able to take this WAR file and push it to Cloud Foundry. I do want to emphasize that if I wanted to go the STS route, I could have done exactly what I did with, uh, with ring to park but I want to show you a, a different style of pushing application using command line. So I have my war file. So if I look at my target directory, there is a war file. And I'm going to now push this application. So the command to do is VMC push, and I need to give a name. So let's call it Mongo Webinar. And from which directory do I want to push? I can specify using path. And I can give target. If I wanted, I could have given path to the whole war file. But VMC will detect if there is a war file and it will pick it up automatically anyway. So it's asking, um, is this the URL I want to deploy under? Sure. It detects that it's a Spring application. If I wanted to override, I could, but this is correct in this case. It asks how much memory I want to reserve. It's really no different than what, what happened when I pushed uh, application through STS. Same kind of questions. How many instances? One. Do I want to bind any services? Yes, of course, because this is a MongoDB application, and I want to bind a MongoDB service. And let's give it some better name, Mongo Webinar Service. Do I want to buy another service? No. It asks if I would like to save all these configuration options. And I will uh, talk about its significance a bit later. But let's say yes for now. So now it's taking the application and doing exactly the same process, pushing all the bits to Cloud Foundry, creating a service, and binding that service to my application. Notice here that when it said uploading, it was uploading only three kilobyte. Whereas if you look at 
the war file it's about 5 meg so how come it it reduced from 5 meg to 3 kilobyte so what we have is we have a, an algorithm that only does only updates the file that are needed so if assuming somebody else uploaded let's say a spring file spring jar then you won't have to upload it ever again so this is shared across the cloud so you only upload resources that are specific to your application and that too if they are changed if they are already available in cloud foundry for whatever reason you don't have to upload those so that's that's why you don't have to push pymag all the time all right so application is started so let's now go to um, this url and this application is dead simple it basically whenever i reload a page it ends up adding a person with some random age and a random name so joe cloud and a, and a, and, a, and, a, and an integer so let's look at uh, same information um, sorry vmc tunnel and this time i'm going to bind to MongoDB. So it asks me which one I want to bind to, and I will bind to MongoDB service. It's doing exactly the same thing. So it's uh, creating a tunnel. This Caldecott that you see here is a tunneling, uh, a tunneling mechanism. And in this case, I can do a lot of things. I can have a dump of my database or I can restore it from my existing database so I can feed some extra data in there. But my interest is just to really browse. So Mongo is good enough here. And then I can do here, and what can I do here? Let's say um, show collections. So there's a person collection here. So I can do it db person dot find to really show all the all the persons so let's say right now i have one two three four five if i go here visit again let's add a bunch of those and now if i do the same thing i see a whole bunch of other persons being shown so this is another way I can um, look at the data um, rather than just exposing through UI and debug my application. So if something, let's say, were not going right, you know, I expected a person I find, to find a person but didn't find it, then Caldecott will, the VMC tunnel command will allow you to browse your data, look at your service, and see if it made to database or was it application logic that failed to get back the data. The last thing I want to show you is the manifest feature. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to delete this application. Mongo webinar. So I will delete this application and it basically says that this application is bound to a service would I like to de delete that as well? In this case, yes. The default is no because maybe this service is shared with some other application. Um, and in this case, it asks like, well, it is also shared with Caldecott. But in this case, it doesn't really matter because it's just a tunneling. So if I look at my VMC apps, I shouldn't see hello DB. Uh, sorry, hello Mongo. Mongo webinar. <laughs> and if I see VMC services, I wouldn't see that service either. So what I want to do now is I want to push this application again, but without asking, answering all the questions. So in last command when I ran it, I was asked if I want to save the configuration. And it did save this configuration, this file called manifest.yaml. So it figured out that, okay, I need to push it from the target directory. The name should be MongoDB. The URL should be of this form. So target base is cloudfront.com 
and the name is the Mango webinar. And then it has all the information about instances and the services, what kind of service and so on. So now all I have to do is I have to say VMC push. That is the only question I have to answer. It says, do I want to push it from this directory? Yes. And it is doing all these things for you. The significance of this is once you push an application and if you want a repeatability, for example, you will be changing some aspects of it. Maybe you change configuration or maybe application logic. You do not have to answer all these questions every single time. So you simply save the manifest and once manifest is saved, you simply push this application with the same set of parameters. So let's go back here. And again, I have my same database and I can do exactly the same thing that I have been doing earlier. If I do tunneling again, it will ask the same kind of questions and answers uh, and I can, I can interact in the same manner. All right, so I want to now finish this presentation by making some uh, high level points. And the idea is each new era in computing brings a new application platform. We have seen, we started with some um, very basic Apache servers and then followed by application servers and web servers to really help creating dynamic websites. And then that's not sufficient either, so we need even better mechanism. And for the cloud era, it's a platform as a service. Just to distinguish from infrastructure as a service where you get essentially computer resources, but you have to manage all the aspects. For example, a router and health manager and so on, that you don't have to do it. So one thing I wanted to uh, emphasize was, suppose for some reason one of these applications crash, not a problem you will, it, uh, Cloud Foundry will automatically start a new instance of this application. So effectively, you are, from the external point of view, your application will continue to serve without any interruption. We also believe that existing PaaS solutions in the markets are not complete. They often require you to make a lot of changes to your application, and once you make those changes, you're locked into that particular cloud. We don't like that. We, generally, we always uh, disliked locking in. So that's what we did with Spring and we are doing with Cloud Foundry as well. You can take this application and push it to other clouds if assuming they don't require change, just fine. Or if you don't like cloud solution at all and you want to push it to normal application server or web server, you can do it. And that was the main point I wanted to emphasize on the first application. I took application, did not make any change, and still could deploy to Cloud Foundry. If I wanted to, I could have pushed it to local cloud, uh, local Tomcat server. As long as I have MySQL provision and everything, I, I would be fine. So Cloud Foundry addresses this problem in several ways. One, it's open platform. So it's open from variety of pers perspective, right? You can deploy to any of the clouds, or you can take your own and uh, take, the, take the source code and deploy to your own data center. We also give you choices because we recognize that not everybody needs a Spring application. You probably are well served by Node.js in some part of your application. You also need a variety of services. So relational database is not the only one that you will ever need. You might need MongoDB in some cases, maybe Redis in other cases. So we want you to write your application in a way that is most flexible and it meets needs of your application as opposed to have to like wrap around your application with services that are available. So just because MySQL is the only service available, you end up putting everything in MySQL. That's not a productive way to create an application. So we want to give you choice of clouds, frameworks, and application services. So you have a few next steps. First thing first, thing first sign up on cloudfront.com. Uh, if you have an invitation code, you can fill it that out. If not, sign it up and you will get approved in, in due time. If you are interested in looking at source code, go to cloudfund.org and they will, you will find links from there. I did not show you in this webinar, but you, we have Micro Cloud Foundry where you can take a virtual machine 
and run it on your laptop or desktop and you can have the same experience as I have shown with public cloud. We share a lot of information about all the new features we are working on and um, have already deployed. So for that, you can go to blog.cloudfoundry.com. So with that, thank you very much, and now I will take uh, questions. So the question is, is there a way to um, point your application to custom DNS name? I think Jennifer already answered it. It's not there yet, but we are working on a solution where we will offer, will allow you to bind your application to, for example, if you own mycompany.com, you should be able to bind your application to that uh, that domain. Is there a way to integrate external services to access uh, Cloud Foundry? Um, yes, and it depends really. So if you, let's say, have a web service such as uh, Twitter feed or uh, Facebook, which expose a REST API, then you should be able to consume it by just having a REST client. Uh, if you have an external service, let's say Oracle database or some other some other service like that, then the way to do it would be to really host your own cloud. So that's where the openness of Cloud Foundry comes into picture. So you can take Cloud Foundry, put it in your database, put it in your data center, and that will allow you to uh, connect to your Oracle or other other instances. So there's a question: Can you add new service? And I will actually generalize this question. Can you add new services, frameworks, and runtime? And the answer is yes. So it's again open source uh, nature comes into picture, and we have already had community doing such a thing. So for example, we have uh, Neo4j supported in this manner, or if you want to support, let's say CouchDB, I can imagine somebody writing that that uh, that plugin. Same same way we have a variety of new runtimes and frameworks such as Erlang and Python and PHP being supported by our community partners. It's again open source helps a lot in this area. I guess we are just about uh, done with the time. Okay, everyone. Thanks again, and we appreciate your attention. Thank you.